During the summer of 1998, cave explorers confirmed that a linked cave system some 15 miles in length winds underneath North Wales. German archaeologist Dr. Heinrich Kusch announced that there is considerable evidence regarding the deep tunnel systems that have been found beneath many prehistoric European settlements. He compared these hidden or forgotten tunnels to ancient highways beneath the surface and the empirical evidence of these stone age highways has recently increased with the discovery and exploration of dozens of Neolithic settlements scattered from Scotland to Turkey. Most of these settlements have been dated to the late Pleistocene or end of the last ice age and the fact that so many of these ancient networks have survived after 12,000 years indicates that the original tunnels must have been really engineered and constructed on a truly massive scale. Now Dr. Heinrich Kusch says in regards to the new evidence regarding the many miles of tunnels that he's investigated and I quote, across Europe there were thousands of them from north in Scotland down to the Mediterranean. Most were just wide enough for a person to wiggle along but nothing else. They were interspersed with nooks at some places it's larger and there's seating or storage chambers and rooms. They don't all link up but taken together it is a massive underground network. In Bavaria, in Germany alone we have found 700 meters of these underground tunnel networks. In Syria, in Austria we have found 350 meters across Europe. There are thousands of them. From the north in Scotland down to the Mediterranean in Spain and North Africa with others reported even in the Sahara. Some archaeologists believe the network was a way of protecting man from predators. Others maintain that there were periodic cataclysms from which Europeans took subterranean refuge. Still others believe that some of the linked tunnels functioned as they do today. They allowed for people to travel safely regardless of wars or violence or weather conditions on the surface. Dr. Heinrich Kusch believes that the church often built these beautiful stone chapels by the entrances, perhaps because it was, they were fearful that the heathen legacy that the tunnels might have represented and they wanted to negate their influence. Or there could be another reason they did that. Hmm. According to mythological traditions, underground sites were mostly referred to as entrances to the underworld, and we find such references all around the world. And although most of us think of the underworld as a representation of hell, uh, you know, and therefore an imaginary or spiritual place, you know, for bad people to go. But in reality, in ancient religions, that was not the case. The underworld was a place where the dead did go, but it was a place with physical entrances, with guards, with buildings, you know, with cities, and one of the most famous underground cities is the city of Agartha. And that's a legendary city that's supposed to be deep inside of the earth. And Central Asia is the likely origin of those legends. And it is said that they are still in contact 
through places such as the Tibet, where the Dalai Lama lives. Now, theosophists refer to Agartha as a vast complex of caves and an underground network that was inhabited and largely man-made. In Greece, we have the myth of Hades and the underworld, a realm where gods and heroes lived. In the Mayan mythology, we have the mythical underground city of Shibalba, roughly translated as Place of Fear, which was inhabited by superheroes and gods and a civilization that supposedly vanished around the Middle Ages. The entrance to this world was thought to be located in Guatemala somewhere, and description of the structures and location within Shibatba are described in the Pol Pol Vu. In Irish legends, we read about the people named the Tuatha de Danann, people of the goddess Danu, a race who moved underground when another race arrived on the island, and those people in today's myths are often referred to as fairies. And as they're also referred to in Maori legends on the islands of New Zealand. In Norwegian legends, we have dwarves being of the underground associated with craftsmanship, you know, different races of dwarves that were the ones that supplied the gods with weapons. In Egypt, we have references to the historian Herodotus of a colossal underground temple that contained 3,000 rooms full of paintings and hieroglyphs and just a massive labyrinth still lost and yet to be found. Many occult organizations, esoteric authors, and secret societies concur with these myths and legends of subterranean inhabitants who are the remnants of antediluvian civilizations which sought refuge in hollow caverns deep inside the earth. Now assuming that the myths are true and the earth is at least partially hollow, how could life survive underground? Where are these entrances to the inner earth and specifically which races live inside? My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an author, producer, and anthropologist specializing in linguistics, archaeology, and paleobiology or archaeogenetics. I'd like to invite you to explore some of these mysteries with me in an attempt to unlock their riddles which have eluded any serious consideration in mainstream academia. Species with amnesia, our forgotten history, gods with amnesia, subterranean worlds of inner earth, the occult secrets of Vril, and 1666 redemption through sin. I plan on releasing several full-length documentaries soon where I cover a broad range of material in much more depth. So look out for those. Please subscribe for updates and kindly share my posts if you find them of value. I'm completely independent and my primary means of marketing is word of mouth. I appreciate all of the positive feedback coming in each day. I try my best to always be available for questions as time permits, and I humbly thank you for listening.